Griffins, Mr. Grucock here, and I just wanted to briefly touch upon what we're going to be looking at in maths this half term. So the main purpose of this half term is to focus on place value. So we're going to be exploring numbers all the way up to 1 million. We're going to learn how to count in the powers of 10. We are going to be looking at Roman numerals, but our main focus is going to be on rounding. Now, we may have already done a bit of rounding before, but this is going to take it to that extra step here in year five. I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes going over an example of rounding on the flip chart here. So, let's say I have a five digit number of 53,924. Now, if I was to round this to the nearest 10. The first step that I need to take is find which of these digits is in the tens column. Well, these are my ten thousands, these are my thousands, my hundreds, my tens and my ones. Since I'm rounding to the nearest ten, I go along to the tens column where I see I've got the digit two, which I'm going to underline here. Now, when we're rounding to the nearest 10, I then look to the digit to the right, which as we can see is a four. Now when we round, the rule that we have to remember is if it is five or greater, we round up. If it is four or less, we round down. So, if I have a look at my number, 53,924, the, the underlying digit is a 2, if we look to the digit on the right, it's a 4, 4 or less, we round down. Therefore, all of the numbers to the left of my underlying digit stay the same. Because we have rounded down, our tens column stays the same and our four turns into a zero. That is because 24 is closer to 20 as it is to 30. Now to give another example, let's say I had the number 72,559. This time I'm going to round to the nearest 100. So, in order to do this, I need to find which digit is in the hundreds column. Well, I've got my ones, my tens, my hundreds. Therefore, this five is in the hundreds column. Just as before, I need to look to the digit on the right, which is a five. Now, if I go back to my rules over here, five or greater means we round up. So every digit to the left of my underlined one stays the same, so 72,000. However, this time, the underlying digit increases by one as we are rounding up. So rather than staying a five, it becomes a six. My final two digits are now zero. And this is because 559 is closer to 600 than it is to 500. This is just a really brief look at everything that we'll be exploring over this half term. Bye for now. Good afternoon Year 5 Griffin families. I'm Mrs Quick and I'm one of the Year 5 teachers and I'm here today to talk to you about our English because I teach English in Year 5. This half term in our reading we are looking at a book called Letters from the Lighthouse. We are reading this book because it's very well connected with our topic for this half term, which is all about the Second World War. And this is a book that is set in the Second World War. In our reading, we're looking at things like um, retrieving information from a text. We are making um, inferences from a text, which means the children are looking for clues about any questions that they answer. Also in our uh, English, following on from our topic, we're going to be looking at 
um, a diary entry. It's a diary entry which is also based on this book. Sometimes our reading and grammar activities will merge together. We're going to be looking at a diary entry um, which will be talking about uh, one of the characters in the book. The child will be pretending to be that character. We will be using things like first person pronouns and to, make, to write in first person we're going to be using words like me, I, my, which sometimes is a little bit tougher than it looks because we're very used to writing in the third person normally. This is the first person. We'll be talking about I did something or other, this belongs to me, that was my sister, things like that. To help with this, it would be really, really useful if the children could perhaps keep a diary entry for a week of things that they do at home, get into that style of writing. Something like, today, I ate my lunch. There you go, we have two pers uh, first person pronouns there, we've got I and my. It'll just get them into the habit of writing about themselves. Later on in this half term, we're also going to be looking at a balanced discussion. That's actually writing, um, writing about something from different points of view. It might be something that actually a lot of people agree with something, and we're writing an argument about or discussion about what people agree with, but then you might be writing about something that is on the opposing side, some, the reason why some people might disagree. It'd be really, really useful if the children could think of something, or maybe you could think of something with your children, that you could have a discussion about and think about, okay, why is that a good thing? Why is that a bad thing? Because that's what we're gonna be looking at later on during this half term. If you have any questions about English this half term, please don't hesitate to contact um, myself on Seesaw. I will get back to you. But any help that you can give us with um, the English with your children, it would be really appreciated. Thank you very much. Good afternoon Griffins, Mr Groovelock here and I just wanted to take a moment to briefly explain what we're going to be looking at as part of our creative curriculum topic this half term. So the main focus of this half term is World War II with our topic being titled A Child's War. This has got a major historical impact on this topic. We're going to be looking at things such as the Allied powers of America, the UK and France, and the Axis powers of Germany, Italy and Japan. We're also going to be looking into the experience of living through a bombing raid, as well as the lives of an evacuee child in Britain. These are children that were sent away from their families in the big cities to live in the countryside away from the dangers of the war. Now, at home, it would be really beneficial if the children could do some of their own research. Maybe they could explore some of the origins of World War II, or maybe they could explore some of the key historical moments, such as the Battle of Britain. We can't wait for this topic. It's a really interesting one, and we can't see, wait to see what you produce at home. Thank you.